I'm glad to meet the co-founder of the IBE Expo, Nadirna Mirad. Hi, how are you? Hi, Tamara, how are you? <laughs> I'm good. How is it going? We've had a phenomenal day, um, far exceeded our expectations. We have 80 amazing exhibitors out there with some incredible products. We've had hundreds of buyers, members of press, other beauty executives go through the exhibition floor. The feedback we've received has been almost universally positive. There are, of course, a few tactical things that we need to work on, but like at a strategic what? level, <laughs> we need more room. I mean, you know, we had a You're long... You're just exploding. We had a long line of people waiting to get in, uh, going around the, the block. So, you know, we wanted people to get here in a good frame of mind to enjoy themselves. So, yeah, there's things we can do better. But overall, the feedback has been amazing, and people are asking about the next one. So, actually, I want to know more about your story and your background. How did you meet Jillian? Um, I was referred to Jillian a few years ago um, as an aesthetician. Um, she has an incredible client roster, and one of my friends was her client, and uh, I became a client of Jillian's. Um, she's an incredible professional. She's one of the best aestheticians in New York, which is just saying a lot. And um, she's a very disciplined, conscientious person. She takes great pride in her work. Um, she's an uncompromising perfectionist. And over the course of the few years when I was her client, I just grew to really respect and love her as, as a person. Um, and she has great passion and vision. How did she convince you with her idea for an, in the Expo Beauty? Um, you know, in the Beauty Expo, sorry. With Jillian, after the period of time I've known her, she any idea she had, I would have probably been, yes, let's figure it out. Um, but in this case, I did some research, and uh, as a consumer of indie products, selfishly, I always wanted to find a place where I could find all these great brands, because they're hard to find. You've got to go to specialty boutiques or search online. I thought, wouldn't it be great if you could find all these incredible brands under one roof at one time? And as I did more research, I learned that, in fact, these brands are the drivers in the beauty market. The beauty market's growing at about 2% a year in the developed markets, and Indie brands are growing at 20% a year. So they're a small part of the market, but they're growing rapidly. And I think the reason is because they're more in line with modern expectations and preferences of consumers. Many of the millennials and Gen Xers who want to connect with a brand. It's not so much what they use, it's you know where it came from, who made it, um, that matters to them. And, and these brands provide that story. You come from the fashion business. You're the CEO of Vesture, a luxury company. And Jillian comes from the beauty, cosmetic business. What connects you? Um, I think what brings us together is, is this desire to be the best at something, to do something different and be very good at it. Um, there are many great expos out there that people go to. Thousands of people attend them every year. Um, they're very much part of the, the landscape of the, of the industry. But we came at this from a different angle. Uh, we're not expo people. Um, we are people who want to serve the indie beauty industry. We want to help the brands. We want to connect buyers and consumers and the media. These are the four key constituents. So the expo is one part of that overall approach. And it's, we believe, the most important uh, part because it allows all of these groups of people to meet with each other and interact with each other and try these products because that's what's so special about this market is people can actually touch and feel and see the impact of these products very quickly. So that's kind of where my, my uh, interest came from. I have a funny but interesting question. I mean, we have like 99% women here. <laughs> You're almost the only man. That, How do you feel? <laughs> that is actually not true. We have 82% uh, women. No, I mean, right now um, it is predominantly women who are driving this business, uh, both as consumers and as brands. I mean, this is one of the very few industries where not only is it dominated by women, it's dominated by women entrepreneurs. Um, and so that's a very interesting um, angle because these individuals bring a different set of values and different set of uh, perspectives and how they want their business to work and run. Many of them are mothers, many of them um, are active in their community and, and for them running a company is, is an extension of that. So as someone who comes from more established, larger, more corporate driven, driven uh, industries, 
that's a bit of a change. Um, but the men's market, like many other categories, including fashion, is catching up. So for us, you know, including more male-focused brands is just a matter of time, as long as the brands are there. Well, Jillian told me that she plans for the next IBE to have like a male or I would say an IBE just for men. What do you think about it? I mean, I don't know if the, the gender, uh, gender division is the right way to split this up. I think men and women who love indie brands love it for the same reasons. They love it because of the authenticity. They love it because these brands don't cut corners on how they make their products or the ingredients they put in them. So I think the, the gender difference may just be that men have certain product types that they need, like stuff for their beard, for example, or different hair products. But the core attributes that motivates a customer to become an indie consumer, I think are very, very similar. And for us, as long as there are good brands out there that have more male-oriented products, we would love to include them because the buyers that come here, many of them have men's skin care and um, hair care lines as well. So tell me the secret of your youth. <laughs> what do you use? Well, I am a regular customer of Gillian Wright's Clinical <laughs> Spa. and. Uh, no, I mean, there's really the You're basics. Your best testimonial. <laughs> no, it's stay out of the sun is the best advice I can give anyone. And uh, just take care of your body, your diet. Uh, a lot of that is what, I mean, and that's what they will tell you upstairs as well when you listen to the speakers. A lot of it is preventative. And then, you know, as normal aging or whatever sets in, you you, you treat it. Nader, what's your plan with IBE? Um, growth. Um, so we want to grow both in terms of the size of the expo we want to grow in terms of our geographic footprint. Um, in the US, we would definitely want to do something in the West Coast because there are buyers and brands that are very West Coast centric and for them to come to New York is either expensive or just not feasible. So we want to cover both of those markets, potentially a third um, Midwest to the South. But after that, it's international. For the expo line of our business, Europe is a, is a natural extension. So you're first gonna conquer Europe and then Asia? I wouldn't say conquer. <laughs> we, would wanna, <clears throat> we would wanna have a presence in Europe. We'd wanna share what we've learned here and bring our experience and our knowledge to the European market. Obviously, we need to partner with people who already have good, the same connections like Gillian has here in Europe. But what's exciting about Europe is Europe has been much further down the path of Code of independent beauty. Um, and also on the corporate side, if you look at some of the world's biggest cosmetic companies, they're mostly, many of them are European based, French and German. So I think it's a very mature market. It's a market where you have uh, people willing to spend money on good quality products. Um, and that's fantastic. And there are some amazing indie brands in Europe. Uh, that would love to come to the U.S. and some, there are some great indie brands well, in the we U.S. we have actually uh, a brand here from Switzerland, 505, and yeah. we have a brand from Germany, Magic Stripes. So I think there is a huge market as well in Absolutely. Europe for, for IB. Thank you so much for being here, and I wish you good luck for the consumer party. We're yes. starting in a couple of minutes. 20 minutes, yes. Thank you, tomorrow. <laughs> Thank Appreciate you very much. Thank Thanks for watching.